which they don't. They have an agenda for ratings, all right? And McCain was good. Fundamentals of our economy are sound was good ratings. If not for that, and now they got him at the DNC, you know they don't have John McCain at the DNC, right? You know that John McCain died like two years ago. Sorry, I'm just waiting for your response. I, I just, I just want to make sure that you're aware that John McCain is dead. They didn't get him at the DNC. That's okay. Take some time to Google it. Take some time to Google it because it wasn't John McCain speaking at the DNC. Just now you saw a brief summary of the previous video, which was the uh, beginning of this conversation that I'm having with a Trump supporter in my chat. Uh, I do recommend that you watch the previous video first. Otherwise, enjoy the second installment in which the same Trump supporter showcases their newfound ability to use Google and suddenly seems to care a lot about the Me Too movement. Also kind of ironic how you say he passed away as if we didn't know. If you watched his funeral, a few of them were doing anti-Trump stuff at a funeral. At least his daughter was. Maybe the media was using her like they used McCain yesterday. Um, I'm sorry. I it's It's really uncharitable to you, but it kind of sounds like you looked up McCain's death and then you watched a video of his funeral and now you're coming back quoting things that were said at his funeral in order to demonstrate that you already knew that McCain had passed and that you didn't know that you still haven't answered my question by the way who spoke who who, who spoke at the DNC yesterday it's very easy to look up um that's how it that's how it reads right now um I didn't say that McCain wasn't anti-Trump I'm just saying that like he wasn't the one who spoke at the DNC yesterday. And it, it's also, it's all a pivot from the, the original point, which is just because it's a Republican speaking doesn't mean it's winning Trump voters. It's it's winning anti-Trump voters over, right? It's, it's getting Republicans who don't like Trump, who are used to not voting for a Democrat, uh, comfortable with the notion of voting for a Democrat. That's what they're trying to do. It's not trying to win over Trump voters. How do you know not winning voters? Because Trump voters are like, People who vote for Trump are going to vote for Trump. Like Trump, you said it, Trump is an extremely polarizing figure. There's a lot of people who just aren't voting, who just decided like, we're not gonna vote because we're Republicans and there's no Republican who reflects our views and Biden's trying to win over those Republicans. So like, it's not Trump voters he's trying to win over. John Kasich does not have any pull with Trump voters. John McCain and the, you know, members of his family who now speak kind of on his behalf a little bit don't have any pull with Trump voters. None? I'm not going to say none, but it's not, it's not a, a strategy. You don't talk about individuals. You talk about numbers. You don't go based on, like, if it wins one voter, it's an effective strategy. It, it, you're not going to win over Trump voters, generally speaking. There may be, like, Individual Trump voters, you can have individual conversations with and get them to, like, stop supporting Trump. And who knows? Maybe the person who came into my chat earlier who was t talking a bunch of defensive stuff about Trump and then just kind of pieced out saying you should have more of an open mind while dismissing everything I said as fake news. Maybe that person will go and read other sources and read criticisms of Project Veritas and actually break out of the conspiracy theory mindset. Maybe I will have, maybe not for this election cycle, maybe for the next election cycle, I will have converted someone from the Trumpian brand. And that can be something you do on an individual basis. But Joe Biden's not going to go around saying like, if I can win over five Trump voters, my entire strategy is worth, worth it. Um, and, you know, Kasich and McCain and Romney are not the people to go after Trump voters. The people to go after Trump voters are Trump voters' friends who are trying to knock some common sense into them. So, like, the uh, two completely separate strategies. Fast forward to the end of a pretty boring conversation about how Biden was obviously not my first choice, and suddenly the chatter brings up the concept of decency. The rest of the party disagrees, and right now... Biden is our measure against a worse, a worse enemy. And also Biden domestically achieves a lot of material good for the American people. So I'm able to, for the time being, settle my disgust with Joe Biden on foreign policy. You're talking about decency or whatever. Meanwhile, Biden's running. Wait, what did Biden do or vote pertaining to war conflict? He voted for the Iraq war. Biden voted for the Iraq war. And like every other Democrat, he says, yes, obviously we were lied to and I shouldn't have voted for the Iraq war. Every single Democrat, like every single reputable Democrat regrets voting for the Iraq war. You're talking about decency. Meanwhile, Biden's running. 
So this is this is a problem. That, this is a problem I'm going to talk about tomorrow. It's actually a prepared talk that I that I have for tomorrow. Well, it was for today, but today wound up being much more entertaining than that. The, the left and generally anti-establishment people don't see Biden the way that the country generally does. The idea that you think that Biden is mutually exclusive with the American concept of decency, no, it just shows that you're totally out of touch with the way that the American electorate sees Biden. They see Biden as a fundamentally decent person. They don't see Biden as the, I, I don't remember what the, the joke that someone came in the chat earlier and made about scratch and sniff. Like, they don't see Biden that way. They just don't. In terms of political reality, the American electorate sees Biden as a fundamentally decent human being. And that is why uh, it's going to be way, way, way more difficult for Trump to defeat him electorally than it was for him to defeat Hillary. Because Hillary had a 20-year-long project painting her as like an evil, corrupt, uh, DNC puppet string pulling center of Clint Clintonian conspiracy theory type person, right? And also there is the totally legitimate argument that through the um, sanitization and, and protection of a real sexual predator in presidential office through Bill Clinton, that Hillary Clinton was in some ways legitimately like far more corrupt than Joe Biden can ever be painted as. Um, which is not to excuse the smear campaign led against her, which definitely overblew all of these legitimate critiques into massive conspiracy theories like Pizzagate and Seth Rich and uh, what was the other guy? Vince, Vince Foster, I think. But um, the truth is that that attackability doesn't exist with Biden because A, Biden is less fundamentally corrupt than Hillary Clinton was. B, he's harder to, t to attack because he's not a woman. And C, because there isn't a 30-year-long Republican project to smear him the way that there was for Hillary. So the, the Trump campaign is really, really desperate taking out ads that they possibly can to like question his cognitive ability, despite the fact that he was just seen like right before his vice presidential pick biking at high speeds with like his family, right? And Jill keeps him active all the time, right? So like you, you to, to say you're talking about decency, meanwhile, Biden's running, guess what? Biden is synonymous with that decency for the majority of American people. In fact, to a huge extent, for me personally, he is synonymous with that decency. He has very indecent aspects to his political profile, and I think that decency is way overvalued in politicians, which is how it's used to sanitize uh, much heavier and more egregious moral crimes, George Bush being a, a great example of this. Keeps him active. Listen, he was biking at speeds that I'm incapable of, all right? So if if I engaged in physical activity at the level that Joe Biden does and that he's photographed doing, uh, I would be, my heart would probably give out real quick. So I'm 27 and he's more physically active than I am. I guess when you're running for president, you kind of have to be. Well, you had to be. Donald Trump certainly isn't. Um, you know what? I'm really happy Trump's president because I, I'm finally... It's so nice to have a president in power who, who finally have a president in power who's in a wor worse physical shape than I am. Was that a long way of saying Biden is decent? It doesn't really matter whether Biden's decent. What matters is whether Biden is seen as decent, right? I don't think any politician is decent. Like maybe I have like certain, there are certain people that I think of as fundamentally decent people. Um. Sherrod Brown, I think of as a fundamentally decent person. I used to think of Obama as a fundamentally decent person. Then he endorsed a fascist for Congress. Um, I, 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 don't like, I don't like the decency label, and I don't like applying it to people. I like to, I like to measure decency in terms of the policies you advocate for and your political culture and legacy. Yes, and by that measure, Biden, in my opinion, is not decent. He's, you know in comparison to Trump or in comparison even to a neoconservative like Bush or uh, McCain or Romney, I would consider him to be monumentally more decent than those peop people. Um, but I also don't like the decency label in general. So, But none of that matters. What matters is the American people see him as decent. And to think that they don't is to either live terminally on Twitter 
um, or to live terminally in Trump ads and Trump supporting media. Like those are the only groups of people that think Joe Biden is not seen as a decent person. What about the Biden accusers? Even Kamala was siding with them not so long ago. There are legitimate accusations of misconduct against Biden that he has come out and apologized for. And then there are the and then there is one accuser who has one person who has accused him of uh, sexual assault. And that ac accusation is widely discredited. Uh, but the he, he, he apologized for the misconduct and then the sexual assault was denied. And every like every reputable source that commented on Tara Reid's allegations said that there are massive inconsistencies and that the, the allegations are not credible. Here, Snopes, did Kamala Harris say she believes Joe Biden's accusers? Let's uh, let's pull let's pull up this window. Let's pull up this window. Actually, hey. Check it out. U.S. Senator claim U.S. Senator Kamala Harris says she believes women who have accused former Vice President Biden of various offenses ranging, ranging from any inappropriate touching to rape. Okay. Mixture. I'm going to guess. I am going to guess that she supported the accusers who accused him of inappropriate touching, did not support the accusers who were discredited, who accused him of more than that. What's true? I believe them in reference to four women who had then accused Biden of inappropriate touching, has not said she believes all of Biden's accusers, in particular Tara Reid, who almost one year after Harris's remarks accused Biden of, mmm, interesting, very interesting. So pretty much exactly what I predicted. She said she believed the inappropriate touching accusations because those were credible, and they were also admitted to by, by Biden, who there's video of him doing it, right? You're citing something that says mixed? No, you literally, you're... Like, what about the Biden accusers? Even Kamala was siding them with them not so long ago. We are adding context to that. There were, there, there were uh, legitimate Me Too accusations against Biden for which he apologized, and um, Kamala sided with those accusers. He apologized for th for that behavior and said that he was going to work on. Uh, understanding personal space dynamics a lot better than he had been raised to himself. And then there were other allegations against him about more than misconduct, more than simple misconduct, that were widely discredited and she did not support those accusations. Shouldn't the Me Tooers be going crazy though? They were unrelenting before. I'm sorry, there's, on, on one hand you have, okay, hold on, one second. I'm gonna play two different clips for you, okay? Cool. So you're the Me Too movement, all right? Your job is to get as much representation and accountability and justice for women as you possibly can, all right? During the primary, during the primary, one of the candidates, one of the candidates was in, accused of a lot of unwanted, inappropriate personal touching. And there were many candidates who were not, and many candidates who were women, who were women of color, who have been outspoken, on women's issues, who have been outspoken on on um, on sexual misconduct and gender and gendered violence, and also men in the same age and 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 race demographic as Joe Biden, who don't have um, accusations of misconduct against them. All right. So, at that time, you're looking for candidates who are best for your issues and who are best going to push your issues within the lens of the candidates you have available to you. At that point, you are going to go for somebody who doesn't have accusations of misconduct against them. Now, your choices are between this clip. I have to be more cognizant. We all have to be more. A woman or a man has a right to say, particularly a woman say, no, this is not my space. They shouldn't have to say no. Mm -hmm. I'm used to, I think it's really important we listen. I think those who are elected officials, it's important they listen and understand what people are going through and what they're concerned about and let them know that you know. And so I don't think that's old fashioned or no. I think it's uh, everybody, we, we should be doing that. But I have to be more careful that I walk in, even including whether I sit down next to somebody and it's not invited to be to, to sit down. So that's my responsibility. I have to be more, more aware, and it's totally legitimate for someone not to have to say, no, no, don't get in my private space. It's my job. It's my job to read that, no, no, this is space that no one wants me to invade. Yeah. But that's one of your choices. You're the Me Too movement. You're trying to accomplish as much positive change for women for the people you represent, that's one of your choices, and then this is the other choice. I gotta use some tic-tacs just in case I start kissing them. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. 
I don't need to wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. Hmm. Interesting. One of those two is going to be your president. You're the Me Too movement. Generally, you're a women's rights movement. You are trying to fight for the empowerment of women's rights. Like, you are trying to hold men more accountable to their actions. One of those two is going to be your president. Which one are you going to be more critical of? Which one are you probably going to withhold criticism of? Because knowing that your criticism is going to depress voters and lead to material harm for your main constituency. Do you think that they're going to go after Jill Biden when their alternative is what you just heard now? They are a political organization. They are trying to achieve material benefits and material good for their constituency, which is women. Women and people generally who are at higher risk or at any level of risk for sexual violence and for misconduct and for harassment. One of those two is going to be their president. Do you think that they're probably going to orient their political behavior to make sure the person among those two is going to be the one that is more amenable to their agenda, is going to be the one that is going to do less harm and more good for their constituency? So yes, they were unrelenting before because they had better choices than Joe Biden. They are relenting now because they have no better choices than Joe Biden and one much, much, much worse choice. This is my problem with the politically illiterate uh, views of literally any political faction, uh, by the left, by the right, by Trumpists. I don't know if you're like a, I don't know if you're a, a, a like a Trump supporter masquerading as like an anti-establishment leftist, or if you're just someone who watches a lot of like The Hill Rising. Um, you know, I have reasons to believe either. You've been very, 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 like, you've had a lot of strange opinions on impeachment. So, like, I'm not sure where you fall in, the, in these camps, but of course Me Too is going to be more vocal about Joe Biden when the alternative is less problematic people than Joe Biden than they're going to be when the alternative is more problematic people than Joe Biden. This is all political calculations for accomplishing the most good for the people that you represent. It's basic political reality. Basic, like the, the absolute bare minimum of political pragmatism. It's the same way that an honest and politically effective advocate of Medicare for All, such as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, such as Bernie Sanders, is not going to oppose a public option because it doesn't represent the extent of what they're fighting for. It is a step toward what they are fighting for. And Joe Biden in 2020 is a step forward from Joe Biden in 2015 for the Me Too movement because a Joe Biden in 2020 understands what he did that was problematic in the way that it was interpreted and in the way that it made women feel about their personal space. And it's certainly better than that Access Hollywood tape that you just listened to. Of course they're going to be silent about Biden. You know why? Because they actually care about accomplishing good. They don't care about just virtue signaling that they want, they want uh, harassment and misconduct to stop. They genuinely care about actually stopping it. And Biden is better for actually stopping it than any other viable presidential candidate. That's not a double standard. That's literally a political group trying to achieve a political objective and operating in whatever way they can that achieves that political objective. If your political objective is to prevent sexual violence and to prevent sexual misconduct and to prevent sexual assault, you are going to go always, you're always going to operate to benefit the candidate that is better for that agenda. What you're talking about is you, what, what you're talking about is you want me too to virtue signal that they dislike Biden despite the fact that they don't have a better option and willfully throw their constituents under the bus just so that they can maintain an image of moral purity. That's not a double standard. That's operating in reality. Hey, there's also there's also the, the 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 added like we have to discuss the fact that me too is not a centralized movement, that me too is a largely decentralized movement full of people probably intelligent enough to understand this, which is why you heard a lot more about Joe Biden at the primary than you're hearing in the regular election. 
now I think you're a Trump supporter because you unironically think that um, you unironically think that Me Too needs to talk about Get Biden. Road, when it is objectively true that Trump is by orders of magnitude a larger threat to women um, in the United States. Like you're you're like you're probably a Trump voter. Um because, cause, like, no one outside of the most dumb-dumb of dumb-dumb leftists uh, is, this, is this deluded about um, how Me Too Dynamics work. Here I'm reading a news article linked to me by chat that's apparently supposed to counter anything that I've said up until this point. In April 2019, prior to Mr. Biden entering the presidential race, reports of surface of the former vice president inappropriately touching women. When asked by reporters, Ms. Harris said she believed the women who spoke out against her now running against her now running mate. I believe them and I respect them being able to tell their story and having the courage to do it. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you think you're saying that we haven't already spoken. Ms. Harris, Ms. Harris, who was a potential vice presidential candidate at the time, when asked about the allegations, saying Ms. Reed had a, has a right to tell her story. I believe that, and I believe Joe Biden believes that too. Yeah, she has a right to tell her story. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what exactly it is you think you're saying. Ridiculous. Like, I don't but go, go ahead. Go, go ahead and make your point. I, heard that. You're being I think, I actually, no, I think I, I think I know what your point is. And there, there's a big difference between, there's a big difference between being accused by one person of misconduct, uh, being accused by one person of misconduct that doesn't follow any kind of a pattern of demonstrated behavior that you, you have shown, and being accused by multiple people of behavior that you are on camera having done. There's a huge difference between those two okay. things. Come on, then. So multiple people came out and accused Joe Biden of inappropriate touching. Joe Biden is on camera over the course of, you know, a 20 year long career in, in the Senate and as vice president, clearly showing that he does not understand personal space in the way that the 21st century has come to understand personal space. Those allegations are credible. They are corroborated. Biden came out and basically said, I am learning from those allegations, was very problematic in the way that he you know, in the in the very half-hearted apology that he offered, but overall demonstrated that he acknowledged and understood that we don't live in the same world that we did when he thought that level of um, intimacy without, you know, very explicit consent and that level of affection was not okay to show to somebody who did not want you in their personal space. Every woman who was asked about those allegations probably in, 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 in the government was like, I definitely believe his accusers because that's a pattern of behavior that is not necessarily malintentioned, but is very problematic and I would like to see it changed. Then there was an accusation of sexual assault. The accus accusation of sexual assault did not have any level of a pattern of behavior to corroborate it. Because it crosses the line from well-intentioned to not well-intentioned. And that what you can always say for Joe Biden's misconduct is that he did not understand that he was violating personal space when he did it. This was an accusation that he knowingly violated personal space and didn't care. This is a much more difficult allegation to substantiate. And every single reputable, sp reputable uh, person to vet the allegation said without more people coming out and saying he had done the same, it was very unlikely that it was a credible allegation. There's a difference between supporting four accusers accusing someone of something that they are on camera having done and saying that you believe someone who accuses someone of something they have absolutely no demonstrated pattern of doing in years and decades of public life. Did Biden's accusers tell their story yet? Where are they? They have, to, like, no one has come out with that allegation. And where's Me Tooers? Again, like they have, they have spoken to an to an extent. Me Tooers have come out and spoken about his misconduct and said we believe his accusers. He has come out and said I am learning from those episodes. People tell their story. Are are, are you basically saying that like, are you basically saying that as as long as more people don't come out, as long as more people come out don't come out and say like Joe Biden literally fucking raped me, like. 
as long as people don't come out and say that, you're just going to presume that there are people out there with those stories who are being repressed? That sounds like some motivated reasoning to me. What Kamala is saying it, not me? Yes, Kamala, she literally said, she literally said, those accusers have a right to be heard. She has never done anything to the contrary. She has never said anything to the contrary. They have a right to be heard. They're welcome to come out and tell their stories. No one's come out and tell a story, told a story. I'm just going to pause here and acknowledge that this statement does kind of sound like I'm diminishing how difficult it can be for women to come out and tell their stories. That is not at all what I meant by that. The point I'm making here is that when there is a literal admitted serial sexual assaulter in the office, I'm not going to walk around basically presuming that there is another story waiting to blow this entire issue wide open and instead just kind of go on the facts that I have. Still, I apologize for leaving my statement open to that kind of interpretation. No one has come out and told a story to corroborate the allegations. I, I'm, uh, but do, do you want me to just like sit and by default presume that anybody who does not have allegations of misconduct against them, it is simply because there are people who have yet to come out and tell those stories? Should I just believe that about every human being? I think that everyone has a right to be heard. And I err on the side of generally believing accusers. I believed Tara Reid until a lot of very reputable people said, I don't know that I believe these allegations because these are actually seemingly non-credible allegations. I defer to the knowledge of people more experienced in the Me Too sector than I am. I believed Tara Reid for much longer than your average Biden supporter. And even now, it's not like a binary of I believe or don't believe her. It's more just like, what's the probability that what she's saying is credible? So she's tossed aside? No one's tossing her aside. But if people generally don't believe her allegation, we're not going to treat it as a serious allegation considering that Biden is running up against somebody who is actually a serial sexual harasser who is absolutely a serial, who does not care about personal space. And not just that he didn't doesn't understand it, it's that he understands it and doesn't care about it. Again, how are they uncredible? That there was no corroborating evidence, that it doesn't fit into a larger pattern on Biden's part, that there's that Biden is not someone who is known for knowingly violating people's personal space. He's not someone who's known for giant exercises in, in um, imposing his power upon other people just to impose it. And that she couldn't, and she couldn't credibly get anyone to corroborate the story within her own realm. And that the the, the few people who did, the and that the, the the people who did corroborate were largely also themselves not credible because their stories were extremely inconsistent. And at the end of the day, my my response is going to be they are not credible because very 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 smart people, whom I have no reason to question their loyalty to the Me Too movement, told me that the allegations are not credible. But also, at some level of independent thinking, I can see why they said that. Yeah, but they started the Me Too thing. Me Too is not a centralized. This is like talking about the. Uh, this is about uh, people trying to say, say, calling up and saying like, "I want to speak to the manager of Antifa." Like, these are grassroots movements that don't have centralized leadership. No one started the Me Too thing, but generally people involved in Me Too see Donald Trump as a far greater threat to women than Joe Biden. And so they're a lot less eager to pursue Joe Biden now that the primary is over. That is a completely rational calculation. These are people acting in the interest of their con constituency, which is women. You, you don't comprehend what Me Too is about. Me Too is about fighting for women's rights. There's one candidate who's better for women's rights than the other, so they're going to endorse him. Of course they are. That's why every women's group is for Joe Biden over Trump. You don't, you don't, you just, the problem is you don't understand what movements are. You don't understand what political movements are, and you don't understand why they operate. And you have a very binary view of what these people's goals are. They were on board with it before. Yeah, I'm not going to repeat myself. I literally just told you why they were on, on board with it during the primary, but aren't on board with it during the general election. I literally just told you I'm not going to repeat myself. And Hollywood? Yeah, Hollywood was on board with the, with the misconduct before. That's why Me Too happened. Was because people with power, they didn't start it. Nobody started it. You do, real, you do realize that sexual violence is a nonpartisan issue that 
everybody, regardless of their political opinion, especially men, is guilty of propagating it and is guilty of protecting it. Republicans are more guilty of it than Democrats are. The difference is Democrats are easier to hold to account because Democrats have some baseline level of self-awareness. So if you complain about Democrats doing it, we're a lot more likely to say something and speak out about it. That's why Donald Trump still has a job and Donald Trump was elected president while Al Franken no longer has a job in Congress. That's why Me Too worked in Hollywood, but it, it would never work, say, in the NRA. Why it would never work, say, in the Trump administration. Why it would never work at the current Justice Department or in the government generally or in any number of conservative-run organizations. That's why Me Too had to happen throughout Hollywood before it happened at Fox News. Fox News happened as fallout of the Me Too movement in Hollywood because liberals are more likely to listen to women's complaints than conservatives are. They ginned up enough to take over media cycles and now can't be seen. Now you're not saying anything that means anything. Once you decide to say something of substance, I'm happy to respond to it. I know what you're thinking. Probably a good place for this conversation to end. Well, it didn't end. It actually got worse. Stay tuned for part three. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the content and want to see more, the best way you can support the channel is to click that like button and subscribe for future videos. Uh, I also stream live to Twitch if you want to join the discussion in person. I stream uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Feel free to join the discussion there or stay tuned for future videos. Thanks so much for watching.